don't know if it's money green, but I'm wearing green because we're talking about finances. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my financial dashboard with you. And this is basically where I manage all of my finances in Notion, which is an interesting topic. I don't know if everybody wants to manage their finances in Notion. I like to have the overview in there. I still do all of my accounting in QuickBooks, but I like to keep track of everything in Notion because that's where I'm making financial decisions. When I'm doing my quarterly planning or my annual planning, or deciding what I'm spending my money on in terms of expenses for the next month or tools that I'm using. So I like to have that all in there as well. If that's something you're interested in exploring, stick around because in today's video, I'm showing you my entire dashboard, how to edit it, customize it, make it your own. I'm giving away the entire dashboard for free until the end of December. All you have to do is sign up to my newsletter. There is a link in the description. So with that in mind, let's head on over to the computer and I'll show you how it works. Hello and welcome to your financial dashboard. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how it works, how to use it, how to customize it and make it your own. If you are new to Notion, you're going to start by clicking duplicate in the top right hand corner. It'll be somewhere around here and that will add it to your Notion account. And then if you ever need help and support, you can click this toggle down here and we've got some links there so you can always reach out anytime. And then this video, of course, Course, will be sitting right over here when you watch it. Now, if you are new to Notion, the way it works is we can really break it down into three parts. We have pages, which is like this, what you're looking at right now. Then we have content blocks that we use to fill these pages. That's things like these callouts. Uh, we have the dividers, some toggles. This is a table of contents. To access any of these content blocks, you're just going to hit enter, find the part of the page you want to add one and either click this plus icon or do forward slash and that's going to bring up all of your different content blocks. And then to delete it, you can just either hit back or click these six dots and hit delete. So we've got pages, we've got content blocks, and then we also have databases. And that's what you're seeing right here. Now we can, once we've created our database, we can add different views to it and we can share it on any page. So with all of the templates that I create, I've actually added all of the databases to this back end. So if we close this out and we open it up, you'll see everything on this page is sourced from three different databases. These are the original databases. And the reason that I keep them here is so that if we accidentally delete this one, for example, your scorecard, we can easily come back in, do our forward slash, add a linked view of the database and just select which one we want to see. And again, I can pull in all my different views here. The other great thing about linked views is you can pull in views from different different um, databases. So we've got our scorecard here, but I can always click this plus icon and I could add my bank accounts and I could choose my view and so there we've got our bank accounts and then our scorecard and again you'll know these are linked databases because we've got this little arrow signifying that they're linked now I'm going to click here and delete them so again all of your original databases are here you can customize and edit them here or you can customize them on the template itself now, in terms of actually using the template, if we close this out here, it's actually broken down into steps to make it really simple. So we've got configure your bank accounts and then you're going to set financial goals. You will be working with clients. You're going to invoice those clients. You're going to track all the transactions and then you're going to complete your scorecard. Now, under each section, I've also included instructions here to help you. But let's say step one, configuring our bank accounts. Now here I've got an overview. If we click the three dots, what I've done to get this is I've pulled in the bank accounts, I've changed it to gallery, and then under properties, I've just shown the account balance and the percentage of revenue. But if we click on this view all, here is where you can actually configure your bank accounts. You will give your bank account a name. You will see the percentage of revenue that it takes up. And this is inspired by Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, who suggests we have different accounts for different purposes. And that's going to help us manage your money a lot more effectively. If you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it. 
as a quick overview, he suggests that we have one revenue account, 100% of our revenue goes into that account, and then we can distribute it twice a month. And we can distribute it to these different accounts. So we have owner's pay, operational expenses, our tax and our profit. And that way, when it comes to paying our taxes and things like that, all of our money is already stored there. And it's really easy. When it comes to operational expenses, we now have a budget that we're working within and we're going to make better decisions because of that. And we're prioritizing owner's pay, which is something that a lot of small business owners forget to do. So these are all the um, percentages that he recommends, but you can customize it and make it your own. For example, in Scotland, I my tax is way up at like 30%. I leave a 1% room, wiggle room, but we have 20% for tax and then 9% for national revenue and, and national insurance. So I have to customize these numbers. You might have to do the same depending on where you are. But again, you just click in and give it a percentage. Then you're going to give it your initial balance. And down here, I've worked out the sum here. And then these different columns, incoming and outgoing. These are roll-ups. So this is actually pulling information from your transaction database. So here we've got a relation, we've linked it to our transaction database, which means that we can come in here and if I hit edit here, you'll see that I've linked it and I want to get the sum of all of the income within my transactions database. And so this is gonna pull in all of this information and the way that it knows what account it goes to is that when you add a transaction, you select the account that it's paid in or out of. So here I've got transactions just to show you. And this is grouped here by our bank account so that we can see all of the money coming in and out of only one account rather than having to see everything, but all I've done is group it by bank account. If I take this off and I remove the grouping, so if I come down here and where I have group, I'm just going to remove grouping, you'll see it goes back to showing you basically everything. And so we've got like the um, date that it's paid in, what the transaction is, what the expense is, and what the income is, and we've selected the account, and that's how it knows over here what your incoming and outgoing is. And this formula is just your account balance, which is just a sum incoming minus outgoing there. So again, to get the group in, we click the three dots, we go to group, and I'm gonna group it by bank account so that I can see the incoming and the outgoing of every account. If no account is selected, you can come in here and give it the right account so you forget to put that in, or you can just hide this here. These little numbers here is going to count all of your transactions, but you can adjust this to show you the sum of all invoiced income or expenses there. So once you've configured your bank accounts, you're going to get an overview here, and now you can set your financial goals. So you can put them at the side here. These are just check boxes, hit enter or forward slash and find to do and you can add that in there. I've added some money mantras from Jen Sincero's book here. You can use them or you can remove this if you want and you can even add your own. And then over here, we've got set in our financial goals. So if we click here and I do show database title, you'll see this is actually linking to our financial scorecard, but I've applied grouping to show us per quarter and I've removed properties so that we're only seeing the goal. If you see, there's a lot of different properties here, but I only want to set my goals right now so I can filter it by the year by selecting the year. I'm going to say, okay, what are my goals for January? And I'm going to put in the sum here. And if this is the wrong currency, you just click in, edit property, change the number format, and you select your preferred currency there. Now, once we go through this and we add your scorecard and things like that, you can always come up here and view your results. So what this is going to show you, again, we've got a table view here, but what it's showing you, sorry, not a table view, a gallery view, it's showing you your goal and then your result. So how well did you perform? It's gonna give you a percentage in relation to your goal. And this is based on your scorecard, which is further down in this section. Step three, we have invoicing clients. So whenever you invoice a client, you're gonna come in here, add the transactions, say how much you invoice them for, select the product or service to change any of these, click the three dots, change the label, change the color, delete as necessary. To add a new one, you can just start typing 
your new service in here and you'll see that it offers a little button at the bottom that allows you to create. I can't spell, but you would just create this. You then type in your client's name and you want to make sure that it's shared the same every single time. The invoice due date, the paid date, and then that's going to adjust your status. So if your invoice is due and they haven't paid, it's going to say it's due or they've not paid, that'll allow you to chase them up. And then we have the column for income. So we can invoice our clients, but they don't always pay that or pay it on time. So we have an invoiced column, but then we have our income column. So as soon as they pay it, you're going to put in the paid date and how much they paid. And again, link it to the bank account. Sometimes we have client expenses. So we've got a tab here for that. And again, you would just put in the transaction, the expense, the expense category. Now I haven't added any here, but depending on your financial software, you can add in your categories. For example, I use QuickBooks. So I usually put in the categories that come with QuickBooks so I can easily just quickly check it off. But you can create your own here. Again, you're just selecting this or typing in your new one. Same thing, add your client name exactly the same each time, what date it was paid, and then the bank account it was taken out of. Client overview is just a grouping. So we've just grouped it by our, it's a table view, and we've grouped it by our client. And this is why it's important to put in their client name exactly the same every time, because if we don't, it's going to think it's two different clients. And if you haven't assigned a client, you can always come in here and you can do that here. So if we do our example client, or let's do another one. Let's do, um, let's do Lev Levi Tate. And if I do that, you see here it creates a new section with my client Levi Tate. And um, there you will be able to see your expenses. Again, we've worked out the sum, the expenses, you're able to see how much income you've made. And that can be a really helpful way to manage your client accounts. So we have gone through the steps of configuring our bank accounts, setting our monthly financial goals, invoicing our clients. It's now time to track any additional transactions that maybe aren't related to our clients. So here we have three tabs. We have income, expenses, and all transactions. And again, these are all part of the same database, our transaction database, but we've applied filters and properties to only show us what we need. So whenever we want to add something, we've got income coming in, we would just add that in here, fill in the details. Same with expenses here. And then if you want to view all transactions, you can do so. And again, if you want to see different views, you can always come in here, you can group, you can change the layout here to different views, you can filter as well to show you certain aspects, create rules, that kind of thing. And once you've done that, it is now time to complete your monthly scorecard. So here's your scorecard, here we've got the month, you can get more specific and put Jan 22, to edit this you just click in. If you want to select quarter and then the year, one thing that can be helpful is to apply a filter here We'll search for a year and we'll select 2022. That way we're only seeing this year's results. Then you would put in your goal. Remember we had our goals set up here so they will automatically appear here based on what you've added. And then we can put in our income our expenses, how much we invoiced, our unpaid invoices, and then I've added just these additional metric columns. So you can play around with these and you can decide what is important to track for you. But if you want to um, remove any of these, you can just click in, you can either change the label, you can delete, or you can hide in view if it's something you're not tracking right now. With these columns, again, just change them out, change the type, delete as necessary, or to add a new one, you just click the plus icon, you would add a new metric, you would give it a title, and you would adjust the format. And then at the bottom here, you can decide what you want to calculate, whether it's the sum, the average, how much, how many uh, are actually completed, that kind of thing. And then here we have your profit, which is just based on your income minus your expenses. And then your result, again, this we looked at up here, but basically what this is doing is it's saying, how well did you perform in relation to your goals? So you see here, we made our exact goal. But if I change this to 120, you'll see I didn't quite make it there. We're at 83%. So that's going to give me a good idea of what I need to work on. And again, if I change that 
to sorry 80 we've got 125 percent so again work it out make it your own and if you want to adjust any of the back end databases you can come in here and you can open these up and you can see everything there so that's an overview of your financial dashboard i hope that helps you to manage your finances finances a little bit better and again if you need help and support anytime just click this toggle and reach out to me i'm always happy to help thank you so much for watching my friend i hope that you found this valuable i'd love to know if you're going to implement it in your business or if you have any questions or any other videos you want me to create this is a space for both of us to learn and grow together. So leave a comment. I'll meet you there and let's start a conversation. Mm -hmm.